I raised my window cleaning prices and I lost a ton of clients this year in 2019. I, uh, this is the time I make a video about this to notify you um, about what happened. What am I talking about? What's up? This is Keith Kelfus with the Window Cleaning Blueprint channel where I exclusively talk about everything window cleaning and I share my journey from the ground up starting a window cleaning business in the middle of a freezing winter like seven years ago from the ground up and then building a window cleaning business as an addition to my landscaping business what i did in 2014 13 as i got rid of all my lawn care accounts and i picked up window cleaning instead that's what i did so anyways last winter uh Moving into the spring of 2019, I made, I drew my line in the sand and I made videos about this. I said that I'm going to now have a new $299 minimum to do window cleaning for anybody, period. Now, as all rules can be broken in the right time, in the right place in the right time, I stuck to my guns and I did it this year. The year before was $249 minimum. The year before that, 2018-2017, uh, was a $199 minimum. That was like that for a few years. Before that was $149. Then I was the $99 guy all the way down to, you could take it all the way down to 5 bucks. And here's what happened, as I shall report back to you. I, um, not only last year, the year before, not much, but last year I lost a bunch of clients. And this year, I lost a ton of clients. Now, uh, I haven't done my year-end numbers and reviews. Uh, every single year in the winter, I sit down for like eight hours straight, and I just get obsessed with all the numbers from every different angle, and I look at it all. So I don't have exact numbers, but I can say that um, I've lost... 95% of the original clients that I had from when I first started my business. And I've always expanded the top as I dissolve the bottom. And now, um, God, I lost over 50% of all my new clients as well. Now, this year was the hardest year ever. This was the most productive and successful year we've ever had. I made more money this year than I've ever made because I raised all the prices like crazy. But I'll tell you right now, I worked my ass off this year constantly marketing and advertising and doing quotes. Um, in, in my business, I do what I call Saturday quotes. So I go all over the place on Saturdays and I specifically do selling in quotes. But for window cleaning uh, between my secretary and the calling service that I have in the marketing, we can sell and close window cleaning jobs directly over the phone by looking at the house on Google Earth, Zillow, and then uh, the square footage of the home and counting the windows. So, but we got a lot of no's. We got a lot of no's at the $299 price mark um, for, and, but here's the cool thing. We got a lot of yeses, a lot of yeses, free quotes, I was very surprised. It blew my mind. And I literally didn't believe at any time. Now, this is where I wish I would have seen or heard this information and believed it several years ago. But we're all growing. I did not believe that it was ever even possible to charge somebody $299 to clean the windows in a basic ranch home. <laughs> Like, like I'm talking about like a 12, 1400 square foot house. We're talking like 13 windows in and out in an hour. But what I realized was with the drive time and setup and breakdown and doing the job, um, you know, uh, 249 is a good price. 199 is a good price if you're fast and you could, it's all about the man hour rate and your profit margin. And can you build, I mean, sustain a bit of this business and without really healthy profits, you cannot grow a business. I know this firsthand. I've been on a plateau in my own service business. You see my videos for a long ass time because the amount of money that it actually takes 
to expand a business legitimately where you're buying trucks and vans and, and work comp payroll insurance and taxes and doing all that the right way it's um it's astronomically expensive and you have to only do top-notch work for top-notch prices i mean you have to invest a lot more in marketing and advertising so it's been a long hard road for me and especially with the the inner the beliefs right and that's why I've looked at some of you guys that do pressure washing and soft washing, that you make the highest amount of profit margins in doing that. What's up, lawn care givers? Mike, Stacy. Yes, we are live. Helena Hedge trimming. And Mr. Property Service. So just wanted to report back to you. Uh, I don't have the exact numbers yet. I lost a ton of clients. It's been very hard. I've had to work my ass off to constantly um, do sales and marketing and quotes to keep the hopper full, to always keep us booked out. We were booked out um, almost two months this spring, booked two months out, and we stayed consistently booked out a month and at the lowest three weeks out this entire year. We're still booked out now. We're slowing down. Uh, but there were some times where we got down to only booked out two to three weeks. And I was nervous because I was like, what the hell is going on here? I've, I'm always booked out a solid month. Phone's ringing off the hook. I mean, the calendar's always full. And the reason the calendar wasn't full this year like it normally is, is because I raised the prices so high. It was hard. It was hard to stick to my guns and tell the customer it's $2.99. But the crazy thing was, I remember we we went out one day and we did like four houses. Three of them were small little ranch cookie cutter houses. $2.99, $2.99, $2.99. And I remember after doing screen cleaning, we do $4 for screen cleaning per additional screen. I was hitting like 340 bucks to do a little ranch house. And I was like, I can't believe the people are paying this. I almost felt guilty. And I go, boom, 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 boom. So we did like 1500 bucks in one day doing window cleaning. And we're done by like 3.30. And, you know, putting like a thousand, oh, $1,150 pure profit in my pocket by 3.30 from cleaning windows, water fed pulling and cleaning windows. We got it down to a science now. That's not every single day, but I was like, this can definitely work. It can only work when you, when you like beggars can't be choosers. If you have so many apples coming at you, like a, like a, like a factory and, and like it apples, like there's shaking trees and it's falling into hoppers and they're coming at you, but 99% of them are bad apples, right? And you're just sorting through all of them so fast. The bad apples and you're, thick, you're cherry picking the good good ones, the best ones. Yes, Helena Hedge trimming. You can only, you better get really good at marketing and advertising and, and spend a lot of money on marketing and advertising. Now, how bigger companies do this, they have multiple crews and they have to cover that level of overhead. Um, that'd be a good question for someone like say Matt Smith, service industry coach or anybody else here that has a bigger business. That must be incredibly stressful and be a science to watch all this work go by you. That's good money work for a smaller operation, but you literally can't afford to do it because you have a huge overhead that's churning. It's a monster that needs to get paid. So you can actually only afford to do the highest, highest, highest profit work and you have to let everything else go or maybe you can refer it out to someone to get fired, finder's fees or possibly subcontracted i don't know i hear a lot of stuff about subcontracting and with window cleaning that's a totally different video but i don't i don't see it in such something that's such a low ticket like three four hundred dollars and if there's anybody here that's done subcontracting for window cleaning i would like to know i can see when you're getting into ten thousand dollars plus plus per average ticket um i'm ex exaggerating a bit but I've done the math in my business. If I were to thoroughly subcontract everything out to legit subcontractors, I would have to triple the amount of business revenue to do the same thing I'm doing now. So I'd have to do 450,000 up to 500 grand. So what crazy marketing and advertising. So 
uh, you'd, you'd be running around six days a week working just as hard as you are now, but now you have all these mouths to feed. You'd, you'd be an entirely a sales operation. So of such low ticket prices and low profit margins, it just doesn't seem like it would be worth it to have that much liability on the line. Now people say it's not your liability because they're subcontracts. I mean, dude, it's your, 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 your image on the line, right? So I've been stuck between a rock and a hard place of that question. Um, and it really does make sense to move upstream. And that's why people eventually do that. They're just doing really big ticket items and they're doing less of them. That's one thing that I don't talk about on my other channel and I should, why I quit doing lawn care. Um, because you're doing 25 bucks a lawn, but you have all these, all these customers to deal with. They're coming out they want to talk to you they have specific things that they want with each lawn they want to build a relationship with you you have to invoice and bill every single one of them and i know there's technology at hand and there's ways of communicating to eliminate a lot of that but still that was completely overwhelming to me i was like after the time it takes to pull up at this customer's lawn and you know, cut their whole lawn you have to touch every blade of grass on the lawn and clean everything up and deal with the customer, invoice them and collect the money. And then you're burning gas and fuel the whole time. And then you have to go to the next lawn, even if it's the next block over. I was like, I, I was so stressed out doing that. I couldn't even figure out how to make any money doing it. And I did the math. I said, uh, if you look at like kind of like the bell curve time over money, the amount of time it's going to take to get this, this lawn care business profitable I couldn't afford to do that. Like I, I couldn't afford that time. I needed money immediately back in the day of my business. Uh, and I started looking at window cleaning. I was like, wait a second. Window cleaning takes a squeegee, a scrubber, some dish soap, some towels, a water fed pole. And now you can clean a house and make two to $300 in a couple hours. You could do three houses a day or more, depending on if you have help. So I was like, wait a second. I started averaging over $500 a day cleaning windows. And that's when I wrote the book, how to make $500 a day cleaning windows. And uh, a lot of people love that book. I put my heart into that book because it blew my mind and it changed my, my whole life. Like now because of cleaning windows, I was able to pay all our bills off and pay off my student loans and put food in the fridge and have Christmas presents under the tree. Finally, it changed my whole life. I'm like, dude, I got to share this message. And then people are like $500 a day. You need to upgrade your, your standards, Cowfish. $500 a day. I make $1,500 a day cleaning windows. Is this guy an idiot? I'm like $500 a day in revenue was getting rich to me back in the day. I mean, for anybody who's going from like a dead end labor job or you hate your life and you only make like four or $500 a week to making $500 a day in a revenue at a 50% profit margin or more, depending if you're doing it at yourself and your first few years in business, all the write-offs that you have with taxes, especially if you file as an S corp to life changing. I watch like my buddy, Anthony Heyman, this guy got into cleaning windows and now he's straight up, he's very, very wise. And he's doing like, you know, $400 houses and growing his business nicely. And I see pictures of him like rock climbing and shit. He goes and does fun stuff. And I just watch when you play the business smart and you know how to, you have discernment and you understand that it's a luxury service, luxury service. Once your name gets out there, and you get good, you can start to move upstream quickly. So here's the final thing I want to say. Don't take any of my advice or anybody else in the window cleaning world. If what they're saying just doesn't vibe, like get in where you fit in, right? You might have to do those, you'd be the $99 guy, the $99 guy for a long time, depending on your socioeconomic strata, the geographic area that you're at, the customer base, the market, the competition. But I can say one thing. I thought I could never be more than the $99 guy because it didn't seem possible to me. So even if it's partly true, 
listen to me, even if it's, if it's partly true, if you're stuck, never underestimate the power of your marketplace and don't ever, don't believe your own bullshit because I did for too long. It's only partly true. If you expand your beliefs and get rid of your self-limiting beliefs, I'm telling you, you can go into a neighborhood where let's just say there's like a hundred houses. One, one customer will be, let's say they're cheap or they don't care and they can't afford it. And they're not willing to spend more than $99 to get their windows clean. So if you get a few of those duds in a row, you might actually believe because that's how we, we build our, through the pinnacle of experience, we build our reality and our belief systems off of real world feedback and results, the haptic feedback that we get. You will start to build neural networks in your brain and actually believe there's no more than $99 per house. It's not even possible because all the other customers tell me no, but you're actually like reinforcing that belief by when you speak, oh, it'll be $199. That very fear like negates it, like it makes it not work for you. But back to the hundred houses, the, the next door neighbor to the guy who was only willing to pay a hundred bucks, 99 bucks is actually willing and more than happy to pay $299 for the same exact service in almost the same exact house. There's not much of a difference. Wait a second. Then the neighbor next to this person would be willing to pay $399. 99 this person wouldn't pay to get their windows clean for the life of them. They have don't they have any value in it at all. Then the next person would be willing to pay $189. And it's like the more of those that you can get in to your network, the more people that you can get in contact with through marketing and advertising and Facebook groups and neighborhoods and just getting your name out there is the more the gold nuggets will rise up to the top and then it'll be apparent to you. It's a, it's true that there's way more abundance and work out there than even we can fathom. And I think that we are the limiters. If you put an ice cube tray in uh, the bottom of, of your kitchen sink and you let the water run in one of the cube trays, it'll slowly leak and fill up the whole 12 pack of ice cube tray, right? But if you put a 36 cube tray in there, it'll fill them all up. Like however much is the capacity that you mentally can expand your beliefs is it will fill it every time. And so I think that we just hold ourselves back, especially me. I know this for sure in my life. I'm still angry about some stuff when I, I like, uh, I'll be on the phone with Joshua Latimer at like midnight. We're on the phone. I'll call him and I'll ask him some crazy question about the Holy Spirit because he like, he's super close to God. I'm like, but, but how did Josh, I know I'm calling you at like, 11:30 at night. I know you got like five kids and I'm crazy. What's going on, Keith? What's going on? What's going on? Okay, this is my question, Josh. How did how did Jesus dying on a cross make us all be forgiven of our our sins or something and we can go to heaven now? That doesn't even make any sense because some dude died on a cross? Like did his blood or something? Like would it, did his blood change the etheric field and create atonement? And now all of a sudden, or was was God like, um, just hang with me. Was was God like, okay, I see you, you're suffering because you love these people. Okay, I'll give them another chance. So I'll say this to Josh. And then Josh will be like, hang with me. Josh will be like, Keith, Keith, open the Bible to Joshua 2 verse 16. And we'll read together. So I'm on the I'm on the phone. I put on my glasses and I'm on the phone reading the Bible with Joshua Ladder at midnight. <laughs> but it's amazing, dude. I have these supernatural understandings I don't ever get. The dude's a genius. And then I sneak the vitamins in with the ice cream and I, I what I really called him for. I'm like, how the fuck did you build a window cleaning fucking business making one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a month, you asshole? Huh? How'd you do it? And I get angry at him. Keith, Keith, Keith. Once you know your man hour rate, right, you have the keys to the kingdom. Keys to the kingdom. And he'll start telling me all this shit. I'm like, no, I, I got your course, the Automate Grow Sell, Joshua. I watched the whole thing and I'm just banging my fist when I'm watching it because I'm angry. Keith, it's just math. That's what he says to me all the time. It's just math. 
Yeah, it's just math. It's just math. You're like the fucking the wizard in fan, uh, the Disney movie with with the the wand, and you're just like do, 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 do. and like the phones are ringing off the hook. I'm just I'm gonna shut up, dude. Stand up comedy special with Keith Kelpas. I'm putting out this video next week on my other channel. <laughs> Only W's. Thank you. Um, that what if you made a hundred dollars per lawn for cookie cutter size, just regular little lawns? It's like me asking you, what if you made five hundred dollars per window cleaning job, and you were in and out in an hour, and you did? Well, let's say you did six, five jobs a day, just to be nice. Five times five is twenty five hundred dollars a day in gross revenue. If you made $500 per window cleaning job and they were cookie cutter jobs that only took you an hour. This is completely hypothetical. Okay. But for some reason you were able to pull this off, but it was easy as pie to you. Okay. So let's just go say you did five jobs a day by yourself and you made 2,500 bucks a day and you were literally profiting. What would you be profiting out of that? Like two grand a day, pure profit. Well, you wouldn't do all that work by yourself. You would immediately go hire people. You wouldn't even worry about the cost of payroll and work comp and taxes and insurance. You would get the nicest window cleaning van you can get. You'd spend like four grand getting the entire thing vinyl wrapped. You'd buy the best water fed poles. A couple thousand bucks a month in marketing expenses. Pfft, let's do it. You would just make the call. You'd be like, you know, we really need a, we need a shop. Hang with me here. You know, yeah. Let me go Facebook Marketplace if they're local buildings for lease. Ah, oh, there's a good one. Sign the paperwork. You get a, well, I need an office manager. The phone's ringing off the hook. Let's go on Indeed.com or let's go on um, ZipRecruiter and hire someone. I want to, I want somebody good though. I want to pay him or her, you know, at least 20 bucks an hour and give them benefits because, you know, I want a professional. Oop, hire them. You got an office manager. You know what? We need some great design whatever you want to do is at your fingertips you wouldn't you wouldn't be emotional or upset about it or frustrated financially if you were making five hundred dollars per house for cookie cutter size houses and you you know it was if it was easy you would just be making decisions you'd be like well why am i even working in the field there's plenty of profit margin to go around i'm just going to hire a foreman to replace me oh you got it now you got a two-man team out there well I'm making all this money off this because crew's making me twenty five hundred dollars a day, and, and I'm still making, you know, almost two thousand a day profit off this crew. Well, I think I'm gonna cookie cutter this. Let me get another van out there. Let's get it vinyl wrapped. Let's hire another crew. You know, we need another crew. Now we're making seventy five hundred dollars a day. You know what? This is a lot of work. We got to hire a secretary to come in to help with answering the phones and doing the invoices. And we're going to need a full-time, a part-time bookkeeper. Let's bring a bookkeeper slash accountant to manage all the books, right? Let's, wow, I really, I'm making a lot of money now. You know what? Let's get into something else. Let's start investing this money into real estate. What I'm talking about is if you could hypothetically let your place, your yourself go to a place where I have a, I have a cat and I have a cat here. I'm, where you were making that much money, growing and expanding your business would be a piece of cake. But here's the awesome part. When people would start to look up to you and ask you questions like, and I feel very vulnerable talking about this. They'd be like, uh, let's say it's me, Keith. How are you doing this, Keith? You've grown this huge million dollar business and you have like, all these employees and people working and you're making all these investment. How are you doing all this? Cause you're making 500 bucks a house, right? It's like, you're just making so much money that it's, you have all these options. You're like, Oh, it's because I fucking work my ass off dog. It's cause I work my ass off. Cause I work on my ass off dog. What do you mean? How do I do this? It's because I work on my ass off, man. That's what you would say. And then they'd be like, well, I work my ass off harder than you do. And I don't have that much shit going on. Well, it's because I'm a fucking genius, man. I'm a fucking genius. I'm a genius. Because I'm a genius. 
I'm a genius who works his ass off. Do you catch my drift here? <laughs> oh God, I feel so vulnerable talking about this. If if what you did had nothing to do with who you are and you didn't invest any of your identity at all into what you did, and what you if you invested all your identity into what you did and you made shit money, let's say you worked your ass off at a dead end labor job or a dead end business and you made no money and you invested your identity into it, what could happen is somebody would be like, dude, how come you've been doing this business for this many years or this long and you're not like a million dollar company yet or you don't have these things in your life yet? You could be like, it's because I suck and I'm a piece of shit and I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. I hate myself. I I must be stupid because I'm not I'm not there yet. I must be stupid. Message retracted. <laughs> oh. So you could beat yourself up really bad. But yet, yet if you take the same you and clone that person, two people, but have that one guy he the most he can make is $99 per window cleaning job, window cleaning. And the other clone of you, he's making like a minimum 500 per window cleaning job. He's just in a different paradigm or there's something about it that's different. This guy would become an idiot who hates himself and wants to quit his business and is just a miserable prick. And then the other guy would, would be like, think he's the most enlightened genius ever. And everybody would think he's a genius. But the only difference is the opportunity in the marketplace that he's tapping into now that's only partly true because there are people who take low profit margin businesses and really hard economic like stratas and they're able to still somehow blow it the fuck up like insane they're very very smart people and there's some people that aren't that smart that they just get into something and they make just job gobs and gobs of money and it just they were in the right place at the right time with the right opportunity and it just worked out like that and i think that the more that we can begin to objectify if the only reason i'm talking about stuff like this is because i've watched both of these dichotomies happen this dichotomy i've watched this happen in my very own life where i've worked my my fucking ass off to the point of I was a walking skeleton like I hated my life and I no longer wanted to live for peanuts for nothing I've killed myself for peanuts for a long long time and I've also done other things where I've made thousands of dollars um, not not millions yet but I've made thousands of dollars in just several hours doing the easiest shit imaginable and it's just I'm like and I'm angry I'm like how the hell did that happen like so it has nothing to do with how hard you work. We got to get into the water features like Greg Whitstock. Oh, Greg Whitstock, the pond guy. That guy's a straight up genius, bro. I've hung out with him twice now. He's a visionary. He's an absolute genius. The guy's awesome. Um, so we got to get into water features like Greg Whitstock. Sure, it's a very high profit margin. And still, everything might look easier from the outside than it does on the inside. And I think that the high level of all this is to eventually gravitate towards a thing that's your life's highest calling and purpose that you're the most passionate about. Because passion is the thing that will pull you through all plateaus. Um, I have a friend who makes astronomical amounts of cash but he's not passionate at all about what he does. But he's like, I can't help it. I make so much money that I just keep on doing it. And I can totally um, sympathize with that. If, if you made literally like you know, an incredible, incredible income, but you weren't passionate, you would still do that shit, you know? Because it eventually it'll it'll take you to other places. So, anyways, I just wanted to share my experience in this video. 
the average minimum window cleaning price was two ninety nine this year. I lost a bunch of clients and it was hard, but I don't care anymore because uh, you can't grow a business without profit margin. And the next thing is process. Uh, can we speed up the process a little bit? I'm sure. But uh, I know what it's like to rush through houses. Uh, now, one thing I will say, Austin uh, Childers, the custodial custodian on YouTube. He's from California. He's the window cleaner who wears that cool brim hat. If you've seen him, he's a cool guy. I'm friends with him. Uh, he came to my marketing ROI live event in 2018. And his plane, he, his plane ticket messed up. And he stayed the night at my house. And the next day I was like, dude, I got to go do this huge mansion, this window cleaning job. Want to come with? I paid him like 400 bucks. He was the fastest window cleaner I had ever seen in my life. I couldn't believe it. He used my belt and my tools. He took a 22 inch Sorbo squeegee on an extension and like literally hauled ass. We did this mansion that normally takes us, oh God, seven I'm sorry, six and a half to seven hours. We got it done in under five hours. That's a huge cut. And just by watching him work and working with him for uh, two days, uh, my window cleaning jobs and skills got faster just by working with a guy who is a phenomenal window cleaner. And I thought already I knew what I was doing and that I was good and I had a system down. Uh 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 uh. Being around somebody like that, I was like, whoa, I never thought to do it that way. Like, basically, this mansion, there is a second story, like, crazy high pl plate glass windows. It has 130-something windows. It's, like, a huge house. Well, while the whole second story was getting water-fed pulled, he was running around the whole first story. He did the whole inside with a 22-inch squeegee. And then he jumped out and started doing all the outside lower levels with the squeegee. And um, just the way he did it was so fast. And then we started doing that. Like here's something that he would do. I know that you already know this. He would take the, um, he takes a painter stick that it's like for painting and, and it retracts and extracts like and he, and he puts it to a carabiner and then hooks it to his belt loop. And then, so he always has an extension with him at all times. And then basically, you know how if you have a, a massive window, you can scrub the top of it and then squeegee what you can't reach. And then the second you get to the point where you can reach it, you just put the extension away and finish the rest by hand. So he was like double wielding that shit. Like while he was scrubbing one thing, uh, squeegeeing one thing, he was scrubbing the next thing simultaneously and doing stuff like that. I don't know. The dude was too fast, man. It was awesome. I was embarrassed about it. All right, I'm out of here, man. Thanks for spending this time with me, my friends. And so, um, yeah, keep raising your prices. Do split tests. And then look at the numbers. And I think I got into the danger zone this year by, I just, maybe I didn't, but I felt like losing so many clients. That was a really tough one. It was, it was a uh, stressful. So I rode the line. I rode the line for sure, but it was worth it.